So the defensive end position overall is completely different today um, as a complete roster for the Washington Commanders than it was yesterday, obviously, right? Since they shipped out Montez Sweat, they shipped out Chase Young. I'll get to that in a second. You know, the aftermath, if you would, the player that looks to gain the most out of this is Casey Tuhill. And he's a player that's been caught up in the rotation, but he's actually been able to put up some decent production in the process. That said, let's just hop right into the film. Now, obviously with 109 snaps, there's not gonna be tons of footage, but what I found was a guy that really maximizes, you know, the chances he gets. And if you've been on the channel for a while, you've heard me say it before and you're gonna hear me say it again, but I absolutely love these guys that continue to run through the play. They don't just give up on the play, you know, they, they continue to run through it. And at the end of it, they might actually be a part of what goes down. Like this play right here, which it seems obvious at first on this play that Two Hill is just gonna go around the side here. Hertz is gonna step up, plays over, right? The offensive lineman over there gives up on it, but Two Hill does not. And he comes from behind and makes that stop. Now, obviously Hertz is sliding to the ground here too, but I just love the effort. Again, I love the fact that there's no give up with this guy. I almost called him a kid, but at 27 years old, he's definitely not a kid anymore. Now you can make the argument that he was held here. He has his jersey grabbed pretty blatantly at one point, but he continues to fight and he tries to put pressure on Tyrod and he gets to him right as he releases. Yet another example of no give up. I mean, he's completely blocked out of the play there, but does not give up. And by the end of the play, he actually gets an assist out of this there at the end. Which, technically speaking, he does a pretty good job of setting the edge there, and then he gets back inside and, and helps with the assist. There's no other way to put it. This kid gives 100% of what he brings to the field. Other guys that were ahead of him on the depth chart may have had more physical ability, but this guy, I believe, is more of a, a systems guy. This is a guy that fits right into what, really what they're trying to do. And up to this point, he's been able to maximize the snaps that he's been able to get. Now, as you see on this play right here, his effort kind of falls a little short. He goes for a spin and he gets pushed to the ground. Another play here where you could make an argument that he was held uh, pretty good there for a good portion of that play. And at the end of it, you could tell that um, he had a particular issue with that. Him and number 85 there with the Falcons had to be separated by the referee. Was actually impressed with his ability there to keep his composure, even though he was clearly being held. And maybe a face mask there too. Maximize effort with a low amount of snaps. That's really Casey Tuhill in a nutshell. He stays at home over here on the edge and he's right in the exact right moment, right place when Ritter tries to turn and go the other way. Perfect example of a guy doing his job and playing this spot. And then this play right here is pretty much the same exact play. Stays at home again on that edge, grabs Ritter for he's able to get rid of the ball this time though. Sadly enough, we didn't get the uh, the dance afterwards there. This jet sweep to Jeremy Judy right here just completely baffles him and it misses him. No worry, Casey. I had to look at this play three times before I realized that Judy was running with the ball down the field. So I completely get it. I'm just a guy sitting, uh, you know, over here in my living room watching the film. So I get it. Now, because of penalty, this play right here was completely lost on all of us. Denver was trying to set the screen up and Washington's defensive line collapsed so hard on him. But the problem, of course, was as soon as Russell Wilson went to go throw the ball, Jamin Davis and Montez Sweat were just all over him. And it led to a penalty. But lo and behold, right in the middle of that penalty, Casey Tuhill's able to make his way in there and bat that ball down. Otherwise, this would have been a free play right here. And that ball could have been caught by 25 on the edge right there. And they had a wide open field down here. Just one defender in his way. And they could have gone for at least a good 15 to 20 yards downfield, maybe 30. And Tuhill with a couple decent little moves on the edge over here, he goes from a club into sort of a rip, and he, he kind of gets around the edge there, but Russ is able to get rid of the ball quick. So he misses the sack, but he definitely puts some pressure on him there on the edge. Again, maximizing effort. He tries to come off the edge over here. He gets kind of caught up in the stunt right here and kind of trapped in between three blockers, but continues to work and in the process, is able to get the sack right there at the end of the play and that that i'm pretty sure that went down in, in the book there as a sack because uh he hit him right at the line of scrimmage same style move coming off the edge here almost gets russ russ just barely gets away from him there 
I've never been a big fan of defensive ends dropping back in coverage, but what I've seen at Two Hill, he's not horrible at it, you know? I love how he sets the edge on this play right here, and then he does not give up on it, and he ends up getting the tackle there at the end. This is your prototypical blue collar, punch a clock kind of guy, you know? This is the blue collar guy that you want on the edge over there doing systematic things. I love that celebration at the end too. There's nothing fancy, just yeah. Who knows how this play right here could have ended, but he had a good move over there on that left tackle and the left tackle grabbed him and tossed him to the ground up getting called for holding there. But he was in the midst of a decent little move there when 74 grabbed him and just basically tackled him and then threw him to the ground. Could have possibly been another sack right there. Look folks, truth is with Chase Young and Montez Sweat now gone on to other destinations, there's going to be a major void there. Somebody's going to have to step up and fill the snaps that those guys were you know, putting in, you know. Montez had 387 snaps on the season. Chase had 419. Tez had 6.5 sacks. Chase had 5. You know, and now you're in a situation where you have guys like James Smith-Williams, Casey Tuhill, F.A. Obata, you know, Andre Jones, K.J. Henry, hopefully somewhere. Still kind of odd to see that KJ Henry hasn't seen the field at all. But you know, Obata's now back from injury. He's, he's seen 28 snaps on the season. And James Smith Williams has seen more snaps than Two Hill with 191. But if you look at sack totals with the, with the second you know set of guys, Smith Williams has one sack on the year. Two Hill in 109 snaps has four sacks and has five quarterback hits. The guy maximizes his time on the field. You know, at 27 years old, he's not getting any younger, but at the same time, you know, he gives them that, that systematic piece that fits, you know, what Jack Del Rio is looking for. I know a lot of us are, are down on Del Rio, including myself, but the truth is Casey Tuhill is a guy that really fits what they're looking for. You know, he doesn't bring a big name to the table. He's not a flashy player. He doesn't have all the twitch that the other two guys had, but he's a guy that's willing to punch the clock and put into work. And this football team has nine more games this season that they have to play. So they're going to have to find production from somewhere. Why not Casey Tuhill? Why not see what they've got there? I don't think it will cost anywhere near the amount of money to re-sign a guy like Casey Tuhill versus either one of those other guys that they just traded off. And while I'm on that topic, I actually think that the Montez Sweat trade, if he doesn't re-sign, was a good deal. You know, they didn't have any conditions put on that trade at all. So it doesn't matter if Montez Sweat doesn't re-sign with, with Chicago or not, which I think is stupid for Chicago to do a deal like that because they could end up falling flat on their face. Sweat could end up re-signing somewhere else in the offseason. So I actually think that's a good deal, even though, you know, Washington had to give up some draft capital to be able to move up and take him at the bottom of the first round, you know, in the same draft that they took Dwayne Haskins in. You have to look at it from the fact of if he would have walked, yes, they would have gotten a comp pick, but it wouldn't have been until the, you know, till not this coming draft, it would have been 2025's draft before they would have got it. And if they sign anybody this off season, it would have canceled out. That's the way that works. It all depends on how much money you spend versus how much money the player goes out and signs for. Just a little food for thought there. You know, as this situation sits right now, Washington gets Chicago pick in the second round. It'll probably end up being like 33rd or 34th. That's basically like a, a lower tier first round pick. You know, that 15 to, to 36 range, you know, there's a lot of players taken that end up panning into something. Or it could be draft capital for them to be able to move up. Who knows how that's going to work out yet. Now, trading Chase Young, that one's a little bit more complex. I saw some of the quotes that came out about him not sticking with assignments and maybe freelancing a little bit and um, something about a, a addition by subtraction. I know the way the 49ers are looking at it is like, you know, hey, we get another piece. You know, they give a third round pick that was going to be just a late third rounder to them, a comp pick from last year. And they get a piece that they're able to plug in and move around. Thing is, when the offseason comes, I have no doubt in my mind that they're not going to be looking to give Chase Young 19 to $21 million a year. They've got a Bosa kid over there that needs to be paid. They've got other players that need to be paid. They're just picking him up for a title run to try to snatch a ring up. So while you might see some short-term success with Chase, you know, with San Francisco, don't expect him to stay there very long. I just question that whole situation, though. Like, you got a guy you took with the number two pick, 
And we've already seen this play out one time before a few years back. You know, RG3, the same thing, except for they actually paid tons of capital to be able to move up and take him. And then they just let him go. Didn't really make a whole lot of attempts there at the end. I know that there's a whole lot of people that don't like RG3. You know, I, I'm not that person. He's not, you know, on my on my my invite list either. But if we're realistic, when you pay that much draft capital, you need to exercise all options with a player before you just sit him on the bench and move on to the guy that fits your system better. But hey, I'm not here to discuss all of that. What I'm trying to say is, is now that's two number two picks in a row that they've botched as an organization. And Chase Young was Ron Rivera's first, you know, general manager slash coach centric, you know, system pick. And he botched it. And I think it's a systematical failure, if you would, all the way around that you take a talent like Chase Young. And let's just be honest for a second, whether any, whether you're jaded by how he's acted or played over the last couple of years, last few years, whatever, since they drafted him, you have to know that coming out of college, nobody was going to really fight with the idea that Chase Young was one of the top players. You know, the talk back then was either Tua or Chase, and people felt like Tua wasn't worth the number two pick at that point. And when I say people, I mean the experts, the quote unquote experts. But it was always a gamble. Me personally, I was never really of the biggest fan of taking a player at number two when you already had Montez Sweat. And you know, at that point, they still had Kerrigan too. So I was always a little down on that. I rolled with the punches on that because the way that was looked was the best player available, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know, man. You know, I, if you only go get a third rounder, it's going to be a comp pick, which means it comes towards the end of the third round. You know, I don't really, I don't really know if it was the best idea to trade him now. I, I don't really know how that works out. Should they have maybe tagged him and try to see if they could work things out? I don't know. Like I said, that mixed in with all the comments that came afterwards about, you know, addition by subtraction and all that other stuff. That was a bad look, by the way. Even if it was addition by subtraction, I still think it's a bad look to talk about that in the media. And it puts a little taint on on uh, on, on Rivera's, you know, I'm a mentor. I'm like your, your, your stepdad or your secondary dad in life. It kind of puts a little taint on that with that little bit of nastiness going out the door kind of directed it at him. And I get it, you know, hey, if you don't want to be treated like that, then don't act like a prima donna, whatever, I get it. I'm just thankful that I never paid full price for any of these guys' gear. I think I, I bought a, 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 a reduced priced Chase Young jersey at some point, but it is what it is. I think it was only like 40 bucks, so, you know, whatever. But I'm going to say the Chase Young deal, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens with Young. That could end up being a good move. It could end up being one that people laugh at us about for years. You know, he could end up turning into to the next Jadavian Clowney, you know, one year here, one year there. Clowney's now made a career out of being that guy that moves around every other season. And he was looked at as a generational player coming out of college. I don't know if you guys remember or not, because it's been a while now, but he was looked at as the guy with all the twitch and the next, you know, thing or whatever, you know? But I will tell you, it brings one thought to my head with seeing them get rid of both of them and not having to pay either one of them next year. Now they're going to have 90 million and nine draft picks, five of which I believe are in the top 50 picks. So things could get interesting. But as far as Casey Twohill is concerned, he is sitting in a really good spot right now. You know, if he shows out really good for the rest of the year, it could place him in a spot, you know, heading towards the future that he might actually like. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a contract for next year for Washington. So this could end up being you know, his tryout to be able to get a new contract with the team next year, or maybe even catch something in free agency. Do me a favor and hit that thumbs up and let me know what you're thinking down in the comments. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and keep in mind the only way that you could catch every single video is if you reach up there and hit that bell. Turning on notifications is the only way to ensure yourself that you see every video that comes from this channel. Y'all take it easy. Peace.